Hello everyone. So in this lab exercise, I'm going to demonstrate how you can create load balancer solution in Azure. We're going to particularly see an example on how you can use a load balancer to route the traffic on non HTTPS solutions. I hope you find this information useful. So the first task we are going to perform is to go and create and configure the Azure load balancer. So before I do that, I just want to quickly highlight what is a public load balancer. So the key difference is that with a public load balancer, the front end is accessed via a public IP address and you test connectivity from a host, which is located outside of your virtual network. Whereas an internal load balancer, the front end IP is a private IP address which is inside your virtual network and you test this connectivity from the host inside the same network. This is the kind of environment what we are going to simulate in this exercise. So first task what we're going to do is we're going to create a virtual network and then we'll create the backend server and the load balancer and we will create the load balancer resources and finally we will test the load balancer. So let's go and start this exercise. The first step what we're going to perform is to create a virtual network. So to create a virtual network, click on create a resource and type in virtual networks and select the virtual network. Click on create to create your virtual network. Make sure you select the right subscription under resource group. We don't have any resource group to select. So I'm going to create a brand new one. So I'm going to call it as internal load balancer resource group and click on OK. Give a name for your virtual network. I'm going to call it internal load balance VNet. For the region, I'm going to retain East US itself and click on IP address to go to the next page. By default, the allocated address space is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. I'm going to change it to 10.1.0. 0.0 slash 16 because it's a brand new vnet we will not have any subnet so i'm going to click on add subnet and create a brand new subnet so i'm going to name the subnet the first subnet i'm going to name is my backend subnet and the subnet address range i'm going to give is 10.1.0.0 slash 24 leave the rest of the option to default and click add so we have one subnet added so next task I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more subnet. So go back and click on add subnet again. Give a name for your subnet. So this time I'm going to call it as my front end subnet. The IP address range I'm going to give this time is 10.1.2.0 slash 24 and click on add. After completing that step, click on security under bastion host click on enable so we are going to connect we are going to enable bastion access to this vnet and give a name i'm going to call it my bastion host under address space give 10.1.1.0 slash 24 and under public ip click on create new give a name for your bastion public ip i'm going to call it as my bastion ip and click ok Leave the rest of the details to default like firewall and DDoS protection and click on review and create. After the validation, click on create. The validation has been completed, so click on create. So this wouldn't take much time. Mostly it would take around a minute or so to create the virtual network and the subnets and that's about it. Then we can continue the exercise later. All right, so the deployment of the virtual network has been completed. You can click on go to resource. So the internal load balancer VNet has been created. You can check the address space by going into address space. So this is what we have assigned and click on subnet. You can see all the subnets we created, including the bastion subnet. Now that we have completed the virtual network in the next task, we are going to create the backend servers. Let's go and do that. So to quickly deploy all the necessary virtual machines, I'm going to deploy a script or an ARM template so that we don't have to waste the time of going through the GUI and installing all these servers and the roles. So it would take ideally five to 10 minutes for me to create all these three virtual machines. So 
we don't have to wait for this step to create the next step. The next task, what we are going to do is we are going to create the load balancer. So that is what we are going to do right now. So while this is happening, I can quickly go to the virtual machines tab and see if any task is running. Um, nothing is visible at this point. So we can come back to this later point in time to verify if that is happening or not. So to create the load balancer, go to your homepage and click on create a resource. In the search box, type in load balancer. Under the results page, select the load balancer which says Microsoft. So this one is from Microsoft. I'm going to select this load balancer and click on create. So to create the load balancer, I'm going to retain the same subscription resource group. I'm going to pick the one which we created just before for creating the VNet. So the one we the one which we created is internal load balancer resource group. Click that under name for the load balancer. I'm going to give my internal load balancer. Under region, I'm going to retain East US because that's where I created other resources. The SKU type, we have basic gateway and standard. I'm going to retain standard. The type of the load balancer, instead of public, because this is an internal load balancer we are creating, so this is an important step. So make sure you select internal load balancer. Under tier, I'm going to retain regional and click on next front end IP configuration to continue further. We don't have any front end IP configured. So click on add a front end IP configuration and name, give a name for your front end IP. So I'm going to call it as load balancer front end. Virtual network is by default selected. Okay, that's the VNet we have in that particular region. So under subnet, make sure you go and select my front end IP address. So because we are creating a load balancer front end. So select that. Under assignment type, retain dynamic. We don't want static on this. And you have various availability zones. So I'm going to select zone redundant and click on add. While that is happening, our resources has been created or it started uh, processing the resources. So we can go back and check after finishing this exercise. Now let's go and click on review plus create and click on create. So this is how you create your load balancer. So while that is happening, let's go back to the Azure homepage and click on virtual machines. Oops, click on virtual machines. Yeah, you should be able to see now we have the first virtual machine which is created and the status is running. So right now what the script is doing is it is deploying the second virtual machine. So after that, it is going to deploy the third virtual machine. So we need ideally three virtual machine to complete the whole task of testing. In the meantime, the deployment of our load balancer is complete. So I'm going to go and check the load balancer. So click on go to resource. So this is the load balancer we just created. So you can click on front end IP configuration to see the IP we configured for the front end of the load balancer. Now in this task, what we're going to do is we're going to create the backend pool and we're going to add VMs to the backend pool. So within the load balancer we created under settings, click on backend pools. So we don't have anything in the backend pool at the moment. So go and click on add, give a name for your backend pool. I'm going to call it as my backend pool. The virtual network is selected by default because that is what we wanted. Under virtual machines, we have to come here and click on add to add virtual machine. So right now I only have two virtual machines configured. So I have to wait for some more time so that I can see the third virtual machine, which is currently being under deployment. So as you can see here, the script is executing. So right now it just finished installing the the first one, the second one is at the creating stage and after finishing this, the third one would run. So we have to wait for that to complete to go to the next step. So I'm going to pause the video. We'll come back to this step later. All right. So our second virtual machine is also deployed. As you can see in the script it is successfully deployed and we have the second Nikki is also configured. Now it is running the third script, which is to deploy the third virtual machine. So if I go to another Azure portal and click on virtual machines, I can see that my second virtual machine is also created and the status is running and the status is running. 
So now we are waiting for the third virtual machine. So let's quickly check the status of the third virtual machine. I'm going to quickly do a refresh. Yep. We can see that our third virtual machine is also created and the status is running. Now, if we go back to the portal, I'm going to just quickly minimize the cloud shell. And if we try to add virtual machine now here by clicking on add on the backend pool, we should be able to see the third one. All right. So I'm going to quickly do a refresh. So I'm going to quickly start over the backend pool process. I'm going to cancel this. We're going to do it one more time. So click on add to add the backend pool. Give a name to your backend pool. I'm going to call it as my backend pool and under virtual machine, click on add. Yep. You can see all three virtual machines at the moment. So select all of these virtual machine to add it to the backend pool, VM1, VM2 and VM3 and click on add. Now it is validating. After validation, we will see all these virtual machine will be added to the backend pool. All right, so the deployment of this backend pool is completed. So I'm going to close this notification. And here you can see that all the all three virtual machines are added and the status is running on all three virtual machines. Now let's go and create a health probe. So the load balancer monitor the status of your app with a health probe and the health probes adds or removes VMs from the load balancer based on their response to the health checks. So let me show you how you can create the health probe. So under your load balancer, go under settings and click on health probes. So we don't have any health probe yet. So click on add, give a name for your health probe. I'm going to call it as my health probe under protocol. We are going to select HTTP and port 80 path. We are going to give slash interval every 15 minutes. It totally depends on your use case scenario. An unhealthy threshold, I'm going to keep it as two consecutive failures and click on add. So now it is deploying the health probe and we have a health probe which is running within our load balancer. Next resource, what we are going to create within the load balancer is the load balancer rule. A load balancer rule is used to define how traffic is distributed to the virtual machines. And you can define the front end IP configuration for the incoming traffic and the back end IP pool to receive the traffic. The source and destination port are defined in that rule. So let's go and create the load balancer rule. So within your load balancer, under settings, click on load balancer rules and click on add. Give a name for your load balancer rule. So I'm going to call it as my HTTP rule. Version type as IP version 4 because that's what we have. Frontend IP address, select the frontend. So we created the load balancer frontend. So this is the IP address. And select the backend pool. So my backend pool. Scroll down under protocol, select TCP. And port, we're going to monitor 80. And the backend port is also 80. Under health prop, select my health prop, which we just now created. Session persistence is none. Ideal timeout, I'm going to keep 15 minutes and rest both of these values. I'm going to retain as default TCP reset and floating IP and click on add. All right. So our rule is also created. So all of the resources which is required for the load balancer is created. So we completed the task of creating the backend server. We created the load balancer and then we created all the load balancer resources like health prop and a load balancer rule. Now in the next task, we are going to test the load balancer. Let's go and do that. So to test the load balancer, first step, what we're going to do is we're going to create a test virtual machine. So I'm going to go to Azure portal and click on go to resources and click on virtual machine and create a virtual machine. Make sure you select the right subscription. I'm going to choose all the resources to go inside the subscription we just created. Sorry, resource group I created, which is internal load balancer resource group. Give a name for your virtual machine. I'm going to call it as my test virtual machine. Region, I'm going to retain East US because that's where all of my resources are. Availability is option because it's a test environment. I'm going to choose no infrastructure needed. Security because I'm going to delete it. I'm going to leave it as standard. Under image, I'm going to select Windows Server 2019 Data Center Gen 2. Under the size, so I'm going to pick DS2v3. 
give an administrative username and a root password to log into the virtual machine. Under inbound ports, I'm going to select RDP because we want to log in via RDP. Click on disk. I'm going to keep the premium disk for this exercise and click on networking. By default, the virtual network is picked up as internal load balancer VNet. Under subnet, I'm going to keep it as my backend subnet. Public IP address, I'm going to change to none. Scroll down under NIC security group, click on advanced. Under network security group, I'm going to select my NSG and scroll down. You have an option to place this virtual machine in the backend pool of an existing Azure load balancer solution. So we are not going to do that. So I'm going to keep it none and click on review and create. Looks like our validation is failed. So we have to change the virtual machine, I guess. So let me quickly check the details. So I'm going to go back and change the virtual machine size because I don't have enough quotas in this subscription. So I'm going to pick one which it should allow me DS1 V2 and click on review and create. Yep, validation has been passed. So click on create. So this is going to take at least two to three minutes. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to pause the video. We are going to come back after completing this step. All right. So our deployment of this virtual machine is being completed. So click on go to resource. So this is my test VM and the status is running. Now let's go and complete this exercise. So now what we're going to do is we're going to connect to this test VM and we're going to test the load balancer. So let's go back to the home page and click on our load balancer. So the load balancer, what we created is my internal load balancer. Under the overview page, we are going to copy the private IP address of this load balancer to see the private IP address. So click on see more. So this is where you can copy the private IP address of this internal load balancer. Now go back to home. Let's go to our test virtual machine. We just created this is called my test virtual machine under the overview. Click on connect. So this time instead of RDP, we are going to retain Bastion. Put the username what we given to that virtual machine, which is test user and the password for that virtual machine and click on connect. So the pop up blocker is blocking me. So I'm going to allow the pop up. Click on done and I'm going to connect one more time. I'm going to select yes. All right. So now we have connected. Um, to our test virtual machine via Bastion. So let's go to the Internet Explorer and try to test our load balancer is working or not. Accept the recommended settings and on the Internet browser, I'm going to paste the IP address of the load balancer. We just copied. Oh, it's not working. So I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to the Azure portal. Go home. My internal load balancer. What's the IP address? Click on see more. It's 10.1.2.4. So go back to my test VM. I'm going to type in 10.1.2.4. All right. So you can see that the machine is returning. So our load balance is definitely working. Now it is pointing to my virtual machine one because we have three virtual machines in the load balancer. If you go to the backend pool, let me quickly show you. We have three virtual machines right now. Uh, we are getting the value from the virtual machine one. And if I go back and refresh a couple of times, maybe we will get the response from virtual machine two. Now it is responding from virtual machine two. After some time, if you do keep on refreshing, you might get response from VM three as well. So let me zoom in and let's do one more refresh now. Yep. So now the VM one is changed to VM three. So that's how you create a load balancer and test if your load balancer is working. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to delete all the resources we created. So it is not going to burn my existing Azure credit. So I hope you find this video helpful. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.